Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here and obviously today, well at least today I'm recording this video, we just saw C9 get eliminated from the 2022 lock-in tournament with a 3-0 loss to Evil Geniuses. Um, you know, kind of a tough series for Cloud9 overall, obviously not their full roster and Evil Geniuses is looking really, really strong right now. But now that Cloud9 is officially out of this tournament, I think it's a good time to kind of look back at, at what we can learn and take away from them um, from this tournament, but also start looking ahead to the regular season because now we're just a week away from that uh, and it's going to be a lot different for not only Cloud9 but all of the LCS teams and the main topic of this video is not actually a point that you know I came up with is actually a tweet I saw from somebody else and a series of tweets that we're going to be going over um, but it is an idea that I have hinted at at another video uh, and I think it's going to be a very very interesting story we're going to be following for Cloud9 um, throughout the whole season in this video today we're going to be talking about whether or not uh, there's an issue for fudge or maybe some other cloud nine players going forward uh, into the season so definitely drop a like if you guys do enjoy this video i would appreciate that a ton subscribe save today and all my latest content and consider checking out the merch first link in the description below with that being said let's get right into this one so the inspiration for this video comes from uh this tweet from cubby uh, this guy is a storyteller of NA League of Legends. He's an Academy caster. Um, I see him like all the time all over Twitter and stuff. I actually follow him right now. Um, I see him all over the time on Twitter and stuff. Seems like he does a really good job making like kind of interesting, compelling content. Seems like a pretty interesting dude. Um, but he's, you know, an, an Academy guy. He, he's like fighting for the Academy players. He's trying to hype them up, trying to build that up. So understand that in the context of this. But he brings up an interesting point here. He says, C9, and I'll like the tweet too, you know, support the stuff you think is interesting. Uh, but he says, C9 is in an interesting conundrum moving into spring, as I firmly believe Copy is currently a far superior mid laner compared to Fudge. Not just superior, not just maybe better, far superior mid laner compared to Fudge, but they also uh, put all their marketing into Fudge. I, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but... I'm pretty sure Cloud9 signed Fudge to a new like three or four year deal. They have this guy locked up to like 2024 or 2025. Um, he's been, you know, all their Twitter videos, all their YouTube videos, like all over everything. Um, you know, obviously the, the organization likes him. They believe in him for the long run, even though he's just role swapping, even though there's a lot of questions. You know, I, I, I wonder about some of that stuff, you know, like you just signed a guy who you don't even know how good he's going to be in the mid lane for like the next three or four years or whatever. But, um, you know, he was a really, really good player for them. He's their face of the franchise right now. Um, and, and, you know, like this guy says, Hey, that's kind of an interesting spot to be in that if you do believe copies better, you know, we'll get into that. But if you do believe copies better and you have your face, of the franchise who's role swapped and you know, there's going to be some growing pains in a role swap and, uh, with a whole new team around him and all this stuff, um, yeah, what do you do? Do you, you know, bench him? Do you keep playing him even though he might be worse? So it's kind of interesting. Um, and then he goes on to say, if you don't believe me, watch his Academy VODs. Also, he's currently number one in North America. And then, you know, posts his solo queue where, hey, he's 63% win rate in solo queue, 1,442 LP, crazy win rates on his top three champs, rank one, all that stuff. Now, I will say a couple things here. Um, I haven't seen his Academy VODs. I'm not going to watch them. Personally, I don't care that much about Academy performances and stuff. I don't read that too much into it. Overall, I think Academy is a place where players should try to be developing. Players should be trying to get better. I kind of um, see Academy more as like scrims, you know, like we just saw Bjergsen go down to Academy a couple days ago and, you know, he was kind of struggling. His He wasn't putting up crazy scores. He was not like he was going 10-0 and 0 every single game or anything like that. People go to Academy, um, you know, for all different kinds of reasons. Some people just want to super try hard. Some people want to win at all costs. And, and for the most part, you know, everyone is trying to win. Everyone's trying to do well. Obviously, I'm not saying people are sandbagging, but certain players are there trying to work on certain things. Certain players are trying to get better in certain areas, you know, eventually make it back up to the LCS. Also, there's all different kinds of skill level in Academy. You know, you don't know just how good the person you're laning against is, how good the team you're playing against is. Overall, I don't think Academy is a super, super great way um, to judge a player overall. We've seen people smash Academy, come up to the LCS and struggle because it's a different level of competition. It's a different level of coordination. It's a different level of stakes, pressure, all that stuff. Um, and like I said, we've also seen LCS players be successful, go down, to, go down to Academy, and for a variety of different reasons, you know, not exactly dominate. So, like I said, I haven't watched those Academy VODs. I'm really not going to, um, but... If you are someone that reads, you know, strong, strongly into Academy, apparently his Academy VODs are pretty nutty. Um, and again, solo queue, I also 
don't read that much into that. You know, I don't really care about solo queue at the end of the day that much either. Again, not to just keep beating down Bjergsen, but Bjergsen went to Korean solo queue in the offseason, struggled, didn't do that well. I don't think that means Bjergsen all of a sudden sucks and that Bjergsen needs to be benched or replaced or whatever. So kind of getting that out there. Um, but I did think this was interesting. Also, we can look at some of the games C9 Academy's played. Um, you know, to my knowledge, they've played eight games so far this season. January 19th, they played against CLG Academy. Um, we see here, here Copy went 1-4-2 and two on Lissandra against uh, Palafox. Um, and in game one, he went 3-1-13 and 13 on Oriana. So, you know, they're kind of one good game, one bad game. Um, now, all of this is, is, again, without watching the games or anything, it's hard to put too much context around this. Also, League of Legends is a team game. If your team's performing poorly, um, you know, it's kind of hard for you to shine. It's hard for you to get, put up good stats, good numbers, all that stuff. But just wanted to go over some of this stuff because, you know, at least just by looking at the scores... He's not looking anything too crazy. 3-4-2 and two on Victor here for Copy against TSM. Uh, and then 1-3-0 oh on Corky there for him. Um, in these games, 1-3-4 and four on Twisted Fate. Uh, and 7-2-4 on Akali. So, you know, he, he does have some good games. And he is popping off some games. But it's not like he's just absolutely smurfing. Uh, again, a more recent series, 1-3-4 and four on Twisted Fate in game uh, 2. And then 7-2-4 uh, on Akali. Is that the one I already looked at, maybe? Um, and then we have 4-3-9 on Vex and 2-1-11 uh, on Twisted Fate. So, like I said, overall, he has, he has some good games. You know, he, he's popping off in some games for sure, but he's also struggling in some games as well. They're only eight games into the season. He's already had a couple duds and stuff, so it's not like he's smashing Academy. Um, and obviously, I do believe that, you know, LCS is a significant step up. Then there's the fact of, you know, how good do you think that uh, Fudge is doing? And, you know, Fudge started out the lock-in tournament looking overall pretty strong. You know, there's a lot of talk of, man, Fudge is... Uh, looking really consistent you know he's finishing his mythic items at like the exact same time every game and it's so fast and um, he has the early laning phase down perfect and he's getting his perfect base timings off uh, and his futures market is getting him his item so early and then he's abusing those early item power spikes he's making it work and yada 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 and yeah I mean yes Fudge was looking good early on but Again, look at the group that Cloud9 was in. They were in a group with Golden Guardians Academy, TSM Academy, FlyQuest, and 100 Thieves. And other than Cloud9 in that group, no team made it to the top four. You know, FlyQuest was in the top four, Golden Guardians, TSM, even 100 Thieves didn't make the top four. Cloud9 had a very, very easy group overall with a lot of teams not having their full rosters, including themselves, which also makes it hard um, you know, to judge too much from Cloud9's performance um, because you know they didn't even have their full strength team. And again, League of Legends, absolutely a team game. You have a better team around, you can make you look good, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, but then once they started to, you know, play against some full lineups, um, I don't think Fudge necessarily looked as dominant. In this CLG series, he actually did really, really well. You know, 6-2-3 on Oriana, he had this Malzahar game, which was funny and a really, really good game. Um, 6 6 on Corky, this was strong. But Evil Geniuses, this is where people kind of started to be a little bit critical of Fudge. I know I've seen some tweets like, oh, you know, Fudge maybe doesn't look as comfortable off of uh, Victor and Corky, and, and, you know, EG's a good team, and, and Fudge kind of looked pedestrian against JoJo Pune and, and just against EG overall. Um, and, you know, he, he did have some some worse scores and, and obviously some visibly worse games. 2-2-4 on Trindamir. Um, he has the 0-2-3 on Lux where, I, I don't know, you know, he's just kind of like a non-factor in that game. But, uh, again, EG just kind of looked better all around than Cloud9. So, you know, I'm not saying this is Fudge's fault by any means, um, but he definitely wasn't, like, popping off. And then a 2-4-3 um, on Twitter. Twisted Fate, but, you know, playing Twisted Fate into Yasuo Diana, that's going to be tough. All this to say, um, I think it's hard to tell where either Fudge or uh, Copy is at right now, but, you know, when I look at just Academy scores, I'm checking score lines, I'm checking stats, stuff like that, it's not screaming to me like, oh, Fudge looked so terrible, he needs to be benched, or oh, Copy looks so great, he needs to be playing, um, and like I said, you know, this guy is a guy who obviously wants to hype up Academy players and wants to make the case for them and stuff like that, um, and you know, some people have come up and, and, you know, spoke out against him, Wolverine saying, lethal dose of Academy Copium, Copy is closer to a Diamond player um, than he is to Fudge, which is funny, but you also have people on the other side as well, um, you know, Karen Mosier, uh, if I can find the tweet here, she quoted this and was like, um, it's Copy's meta, and going to Academy for a few weeks is in a death sentence um i'm a biased copy fan but in most cases if you start a role swap in lcs over putting him in academy and letting your academy player ride the first few weeks you're doing both of the players a disservice um you know she really thinks that hey fudge needs some time he should go down to academy he should get his playing time there um and then uh you know that'll help copy out getting some more lcs experience and that'll give fudge uh some practice against some worse teams worse players and actually get to learn how to play mid lane and stuff like that because again fudge is you know trying to make this role swap over just a couple of months and 
I do think this brings up the very, very interesting point. Again, while I don't agree with this, I don't think, at least from what I've seen, that Fudge, you know, should be benched or that copy needs to be coming up or anything like that. I think it's fine if you ride Fudge out for spring, just like last year where he developed super, super fast, super amazingly over the course of the season. He started out as one of the worst players in the LCS during the lock-in tournament, ended up being one of the best players in the LCS by the end of summer and, and you know, headed into Worlds and stuff. Um, I do think it, it brings back these interesting points of Cloud9 having this 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 17, whatever man roster and them saying that they're going to be starting the best players at, at the best times. And, you know, it's going to be very, very interesting, interesting to see if that actually does happen. And, you know, I will obviously we'll never know how things are going on behind the scenes or, or how things are going in internal scrims or internal solo queue or whatever the heck is going on. But you know, there is going to be people calling for things like this. You know, if Fudge does have a bad week or a bad couple of weeks or if Cloud9 loses a couple of games, people are going to be asking those questions of, of hey, you know, we said that the best players were, were going to gonna play right now. And, you know, is Fudge a month or two into his mid lane role swap? Is he better than the Academy mid laner? You know, is this truly the best Cloud9 roster out there? Um, and then there's also the other side of like, hey, even if Fudge isn't better in copy right now, he should still play because he's going to develop. He's going to be better than him, whatever. But that doesn't fit what, you know, Cloud9 and LS and some of these people are telling us. They're telling us that, hey, the five five best guys are going to play. And, you know, everyone's on board for that. That that inspires your academy players and your internal scrim people to to try their best and get excited for like, yeah, we're going to work and hopefully we're going to make our way back to, to the starting lineup and hopefully we're going to work our way in. But if after a couple of weeks or months or whatever, they see that, hey, it actually doesn't matter. No matter how good we do in internal scrims, no matter how good we do, um, you know, in academy or whatever, that we can't break into the LCS, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to play over FUD, we're not going to start over um, Summit or, or whatever, that might get a little bit demoralizing, that might frustrate some people, that might annoy some people, so to me it's going to be very, very interesting to see if Cloud9 does actually move around pieces on their lineup the whole season, if, you know, is Berserker going to play an Academy at all, is Fudge going to get benched for a week or two ever, is is Blabber going to gonna play some Academy and is Mal's going to come up, is Sven ever going to get a shot at coming back? Um, it's going to be very, very interesting to see. And then it also kind of brings up the ideas of, you know, some people I know have the meme of like, oh, LS hires his friends or, oh, there's some nepotism with LS or whatever, um, you know, because he has like uh, Max Waldo and Vigar V2 and all these these guys in his coaching staff that, you know, he has history with and friends with. But he also, uh, you know, has been friends with Fudge. And, and that kind of throws a whole wrench and a whole wrinkle into things of like, hey, if Fudge does struggle in the mid lane, and if Copy is popping off in Academy and is popping off in solo queue, um, you know, is LS gonna bench Fudge? Is Fudge gonna have some preferential treatment from LS, from the organization, since they've been putting so much, you know, screen time and and, and pushing him so hard, and uh, Fudge and LS have, you know, some prior relationship or whatever? There's a lot of moving parts here. There's a lot of different stuff going on. And overall, you know, I don't think we can really judge anything yet until we see the full Cloud9 starting lineup. And overall, I'm still really, really excited for the full Cloud9 starting lineup. I think Summit and Berserker are going to come in and be beasts. I think Fudge is going to be good in the mid lane at some point during the season. I, I think Blabber, um, you know, hopefully we'll get to see more of Spring Split Blabber than Summer Blabber. Uh, and, you know, either win some Riles. I don't, I don't really know too much what to think about the support. But overall, I think Cloud9's lineup is good. I think they have a chance to make it to Worlds. But if things go bad, if some players struggle, if the team overall struggles, um, you know, people are going to be asking questions like this. You know, there's going to be people uh, vocally asking about like, hey, what about this player? What about that player? Uh, and Cloud9 is going to be in some interesting decisions. I, I like this setup that they have. I like the idea of the internal scrims. I like the idea of having a ton of good players trying to make everyone better, trying to make everyone work, trying to push everybody every day in practice and, and internally and, and being able to control variables and all that stuff. But... It's also going to bring up uh, some very, very interesting decisions uh, and debates, and, and some people might get upset. Some people might get frustrated, and it might cause some inner you know, turmoil or whatever inside Cloud9 as well. I, I don't know. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be interesting, and this is definitely going to be a, a story to, to follow the whole season, but I did think it was interesting that there are a couple people bringing this up right now. You know, Again, this guy's saying he believes Copy is far superior to Fudge in the mid lane. Again, I'm not saying that at all. But it, it's an interesting point, and I think it's an interesting discussion. But that's pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you did enjoy it. A little bit longer video than usual. I had kind of a lot to talk about and a lot to break down. I don't know. Hopefully, I made my points well. Hopefully, you know, the, the ideas got across. But uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this whole situation. Uh, do you think Copy should be starting in the LCS? Do you think Fudge should be starting? Um, do you think this is crazy, stupid? Do you think it's interesting? I don't know. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe, save up to date, and all my latest content. Hopefully, catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.